he cornered us. And it was like, well, you guys either pay or leave, and you guys gotta get out of the bus. Really terrible. It's a terrible feeling. There, this is like scamming. Like, there's no way that they can get away with this. What is happening, guys? Welcome to the Remedy Tree Vlog. Today, it is time for the maiden voyage of this bus. We haven't named the bus yet. Look at this. We haven't named the bus yet, guys, but it's a maiden voyage, okay? This is the Remedy Tree bus. We did get a suggestion from Rhonda Vincent. She said to call it the Remedy Express. Let me know in the comments right now before you do anything. Should we call it the Remedy Express because Rhonda Vincent herself named it. There's the bus. It's time to hit the road. My battery's dying, so let's keep it short. It started great. I mean, we all loaded up in the bus and headed, headed to St. Augustine with the kids. was such a significant moment. And we pulled in there, you know, in cloud nine. All right, <laughs> we're pulling up here to the Gamble Rogers Music Festival. I was just telling Nathan, this is the first time ever in Remedy Tree history that we pull up to a festival in a bus as a headliner, all right? It won't be the last time, guys. This love journey's journey, just beginning here. Journey. Let's do this. Super stoked, here's the festival. I don't know, should we call it the Vroom Shroom? The Shroom Vroom? I can't decide on the names. Please comment. We need help. Claudia, especially. He's got a good We are here. You know, we were doing our rehearsal, and our, our photographer, Tucker Jones, goes up to the bus, and he gets there. And we're all going crazy. We're like, oh my gosh, it's Tucker, right? Tucker's in the house! Here I am. What's up, man? <laughs> Check out the new new uh, crib. It was, it, was, it was awesome, you know. One of the best crowds I've ever played to, honestly. You know, Gabriel had the, the glowing sticks passed out in the crowd. It was awesome. We felt so special about that show and, and everyone that was there enjoyed it and we were coming off from such a high. We had glow sticks and jams and there was a lot of people. It was a great show. I loved it. Uh, it, it, it like very special to me. We are here for the show. How was that show, Bryce? It was awesome, actually. That show was <laughs> smacking. Lights was such a good idea. A shout out to Tucker Jones for for just being an awesome dude. Just, Thank you, just, Tucker. Just straight up awesome dude. Tucker's anyway, we're headed out to Tennessee. Gotta it's, be shirtless. I'm shirtless. <laughs> Let's get on the road. First trip in the bus, so it was a little bit exciting, nerve wracking, all the things. <laughs> Nathan and Abby basically slept the whole way. Um, Bryce slept for part of it and then he was hanging out with me in the front of the bus. You know, he looked lonely anyways, gotta give him a little bit of company. <laughs> and that's when things got weird because we pulled over for gas and I heard something weird on the transmission. Yo, it's uh, 4.30 in the morning. Yo! 4.30 in the morning. Oh, no, it's late. We're early, I guess. Early. We have another four hours to go. Stop at the gas station and my back itches. Check the engine oil. The engine oil was a little bit low. So we went and got engine oil. We got off on the highway again and then the transmission started acting up even more. And it was then that it clicked. I was like, crap, this is the transmission. We had just left the loves. We had like three or four miles before the next exit. So I pulled into a, a rest stop because I knew what it was. I wake up expecting to be like in Tennessee by now, right? It turns out we're in South Carolina. And I'm like, okay, what's going on? Why have we been at this rest stop for four hours or whatever? The whole night, Gabriel and Bryce had been trying to fix the bus because the transmission didn't have any oil in it. Gosh, we were, we were like asking everybody if they had, you know, some like transmission fluid or something. Finally, I think around six or seven, the sun already had come up and we finally got a ride to the Loves. We wiped them out of all the transmission oil. We're like back at it again, we're stoked. Yeah, we lost a couple hours, but whatever. A few hours stuck at a rest stop, but you know, what's the big well, deal? We're making it to this gig. It's a small setback, right? Minor setback. 
gonna be, it's all gonna be okay, right? And I was like, all right, I'm, I'm gonna go lay down and get some rest. I didn't even, that thought just entered my head before something else went wrong. And that's when people start frantically pointing at our front tire like something was terribly wrong. Just like, right, just like pointing at our, our bus. And, and I was like, what the heck? I, I, did, I did hear like some kind of rattling. I was like, crap. So we pull over. Thankfully, there's another exit there. And that's where we pull into Orangeburg, run down gas station, like an old truck stop. Open uh, quickly. You know, pull the pull the air brakes, open the window, look in, and I see flames coming out of the, the wheel bearing area. I'm like, crap. He was like, oh, crap, our freaking wheel's on fire. You know, <laughs> he didn't exactly say that, but, but I'm not gonna quote him. That moment, I knew exactly what was going on. I kind of went into let's not panic mode and trying to keep everyone sane and not upset and just like, okay, so what do we do next? And let's get it, let's make it happen. We'll figure this out, kind of. We're stuck here. All right, we broke down. It's been a crazy morning and we just got a busted wheel bearing. See so yeah, how we're getting the bus towed? That wheel bearing was literally on fire. Somebody flagged us down and I looked and it had flames. We have 10 hours till our show in Kingsport, Tennessee. Time is ticking, I guess. <sighs> Lord have mercy. At this point, we're super stressed out. Like, are we gonna make it to our gig? And eventually, after a while, we get somebody to come tow us. Get the number to this place called Kelvin's. They're all stoked. They're like, oh yeah, we'll do it. I mean, we just did two of those yesterday. We'll just get you in the shop, get you out of there in two or three hours. And I'm like, crap, all right, this is, like, we're on our way again. Like, this is just a small hiccup. It was a great towing experience. We were super stoked. We thought we were gonna get back on the road, you know. We were gonna get there. We thought we were gonna get there, basically. <laughs> hours till the show a mechanic shop a random mechanic shop on a Saturday afternoon they're taking care of us so at first everyone was super nice the, the tow truck driver really friendly I feel like they were all super overly optimistic but we were all so tired that we didn't care we were like okay they're gonna fix it for us it's not gonna be a problem <laughs> And they start taking apart this wheel bearing. There's stuff everywhere. There's people smoking weed back there. There's malnourished dogs tied in chains everywhere. It's like something out of a movie or something. So we're like, whatever. You know, these guys, they're friendly. They're gonna help us out. It's all, you know, it's the best we can do. We were chilling on the bus, just waiting for them to fix it. And then three hours went by and I started noticing that our window to get a rental vehicle to get to the show was closing. So I mentioned, hey, should we get a rental van? And uh, uh, Gabby went out to talk to them and they were basically like, no, no, we'll get it fixed, no problem. And they sent someone off to go get the parts. Things start going south gradually, but surely. Hours, hours and hours and hours. Nobody's doing anything with the bus. And they didn't have a bathroom. So we had to go to the Hardee's next door. They were like, there's no bathroom. There's no place to sit inside. So go over there to go to the bathroom. So you know, there's a Hardee's next door. We go and... I ate some nasty food. That Hardee's smelled like poop. But we kept eating there because it's all we had. I, I never want to see a Hardee's again in my entire life. Nathan ate so much food. Hope he doesn't mind I say that. I tried to stress eat, but it just wasn't working. People were kind of brushing us off, ignoring us. The guy who left to get the parts was gone for over four hours. We were out of choices except to hope that they would fix the, the bus in time. This dude comes back with like parts, didn't even have the right ones. And they're they're slapping this thing back together very, very slowly. And then this dude said he needs, I need a fat washer. And I'm like, fat washer? He's like, we'll go grab a fat washer real quick. <laughs> and then instantly we're all like, oh, heck no, not, a, not again. And I was just sitting inside the bus hoping that everything was going to be fine a lot of praying and just waiting on news like five o'clock at this point people are leaving they're saying oh the parts are here the, just go wait over there the parts they're on their way at that point we had looked at the reviews and they were like nightmarish we knew we were in trouble reviews on there about people getting extorted they finally got the they finally got it put together 
and we pull out of there and we're next to the office that was also their house and we try to talk to the secretary which was the owner's wife and she right away knew that nothing was going to budge on the price. Uh, the wheel was very jury rigged. Um, all three of the guys had watched them put it back together and <laughs> come time to pay I was like well I need to go talk to them because this isn't right. I was very polite I feel. I don't know you can ask Gabby I guess. I was just basically like hey this is what happened. Can you give us any break on the price? And that's when the owner got super combative and he gets all butt hurt and a complete baby about the whole thing. Just complete immature, very, very bad. Just bad behavior, terrible business behavior. Telling us we were stressing him out and we were making our problems his problems. Circular reasoning, just kept talking over me, like wouldn't listen to me. And he was just, he was getting really aggressive. He was walking around fast and talking really loud. And we we're like, dude, calm down. Like we just wanted to see if we could get a break on the price. You didn't, you didn't fix it right. And we're, we're like eight hours late. So we just lost a bunch of money. You would think a mom and pop place could understand that. We just lost. He wasn't about to pay for this crap, you know? They're, this is like scamming. Like, there's no way that they can get away with this. His tow truck guy came in and he got in our face and it was like, well, you guys either pay or leave and you guys gotta get out of the bus. I'm like, why are these guys getting so aggressive? We're not being mean to them. You know, Abby was pretty upset. She was trying to reason with these people. So at that point, I kind of knew what was going on. I was like, Abby, we just gotta pay and leave. Like this isn't safe anymore. And then the owner comes in again and says, well, since you, since you raise all this stink about this thing, I'm not gonna accept your credit card. You have to pay cash or you can't, or you can't, you gotta leave the bus. Um, eventually, they figured out that we were not going to give them cash, um, but we did go ahead and pay on the credit card and they let us leave. We got on the bus as fast as we could. Like, I literally ran on the bus. We closed it up and we boogied out of there. Like, we were not playing around anymore. They scared the crap out of us. <laughs> In hindsight, I wish I had called the cops. Gabby didn't want me to call the cops, but I really I really wish I had because it, I felt like it was one of those situations when, you, when you've never been threatened by someone before, you don't know what to do in that moment. It's just like sheer panic, but that's probably what would have been the best thing to do. <laughs> I mean, it was just misery. Being there stuck, completely helpless, feeling taken advantage of for hours on end. I mean, what, what people can do to other people and take advantage of them. We get on the road and we're getting out of there as fast as we can, you know. And it was, then it was, it was fine all the way home. Everybody's safe. I was a little afraid at times, but uh, we all got home safely. Stop, don't even stop in Orangeburg. Just, just, just skip that town. I hope you don't live there because you won't be seeing me. <laughs> I'm just super thankful that we have the support and the family that we did and that God helped us get home safely, even though it could have all gone south on the way home. You know, you live and you learn. <laughs> oh gosh. We're good now, we're back on the road and we're gonna keep grinding. It's very strange how life is and how the journey goes. It doesn't go like you plan it. It, it does the weirdest and the strangest things. Love the journey. From now on, we're just gonna keep going. Not gonna let anything set us back. Things like this happen, you know? It's part of the journey. Love you guys, love the journey. We're gonna play some more music. We're gonna get back on the road and we'll see you guys out there. That's a pretty cool looking rock. Subscribe to the Remedy 3 vlog or die.